Hi, my name is Joe. I'm a senior musculoskeletal physiotherapist here at Imperial College Healthcare Trust and I'm in the gym today to try and talk to you about some certain conditions and give you some advice. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about carpal tunnel syndrome. So first of all, what is carpal tunnel syndrome? Well, it's the collection of symptoms that occur at the wrist, causing pain, numbness and some tingling into the fingers of the hand. So, what are the typical symptoms associated with carpal tunnel syndrome? Well, often this is pain and tingling into the thumb and the first fingers of the hand, and sometimes an ache into the wrist. Sometimes you might not have any pain at all, but mainly have pins and needles or tingling. In certain examples, because the nerve is involved, this may cause clumsiness in the hand. It may make it difficult for you to perform certain tasks that involve using your fingers or gripping objects. This is a really common condition and typically affects one in 25 people. Unfortunately, females aged between 40 and 60 are at the highest risk of developing carpal tunnel syndrome. Often, carpal tunnel presents itself slowly over time and very rarely is there an instant start to your symptoms. People often describe waking up at night because of the symptoms into their hand and wrist and this is often alleviated by giving the hand a shake. Sometimes as well, people report difficulty trying to extend and flex their fingers on waking if they have carpal tunnel. In the daytime, symptoms often associated with carpal tunnel syndrome are difficulty holding a, a book, a newspaper or a phone, and often getting the same symptoms when using a screwdriver or trying to open a jar. The condition is thought to come about through uh, compression or irritation within the carpal tunnel, which sits in your wrist. And this can then lead to a triggering of negative events that lead to overall pain and the tingling that was mentioned before. The reason you get these tingling and or pain is because within the carpal tunnel sits the median nerve, which is the nerve affected in this condition. So the risk factors for carpal tunnel syndrome are quite wide and variable. These include being over the age of 30, having specific anatomy variations that lead to a greater risk of compression of the nerve, having a higher body mass index, and often being pregnant. Lastly, having a job that involves lots of repeated wrist movement can increase your risk of developing carpal tunnel syndrome. But ultimately, it is rare to find one exact cause for this condition, and it is likely to be a combination of different factors. Typically, the symptoms of getting tingling and numbness into the hand, waking up at night because of these symptoms, and gaining relief from shaking your hand is all that is needed to try and diagnose carpal tunnel syndrome. However, in certain examples, an EMG may be used to distinguish what level of irritation is occurring at the nerve. However, sometimes a healthcare professional may try and organise a scan to determine the level of irritation at the nerve or if there are any other injuries in the surrounding area. So what can we do to try and treat carpal tunnel syndrome? Well, often the first line of treatment is trying to modify your activity and giving the body and the wrist a chance to rest and recover. Sometimes this comes in the form of wearing splints at the wrist, particularly at night. And research has shown that wearing these splints for six weeks gives a really good outcome for people with carpal tunnel syndrome. The splint is designed to try and keep the wrist in one position to avoid compression of the carpal tunnel to help try and settle the symptoms down. In certain situations, if your symptoms are bad enough, you may be referred to a physiotherapist like myself who can guide you on specific exercises such as stretching and strengthening the muscles around the wrist and certain gliding movements to try and encourage the nerve to calm down. However, often the help of a physiotherapist giving certain exercises and stretches is not needed and the symptoms will improve with the wrist splints. If you have tried the above steps, you may need to try and contact your GP to provide further advice and potentially some medication to try and settle the nerve irritation. In certain situations, particularly if you've had a traumatic event, you may need to be assessed by a doctor to determine if there are any other injuries involved at the wrist. If you're still struggling and you've tried the above steps, you may be referred to have 
a corticosteroid injection into the wrist to try and calm down the symptoms. Lastly, if all else fails, you may be referred to an orthopaedic doctor who needs to assess you to determine whether any surgical intervention is needed. Overall, untreated carpal tunnel syndrome will improve in up to one or three people. If you catch the symptoms early and you adapt your activity and you try to rest and recover, the symptoms should improve with time. Alternatively, research shows that the use of wrist splints at night for six weeks improves symptoms in up to 70% of people. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful.